thank you to Greensmith Farm CBD for sponsoring us today. Greensmith Farms makes all natural, full-spectrum craft CBD tinctures and gummies. And if you know me, you know your boy has no problem with CBD, THC, any of it. And I like it. And what I enjoy about the good people at Greensmith's Farm CBD is that it's all natural. It's that it's been easy to use for my aches and pains. Go to bed. You know, CBD is everywhere and you might as well go and get it from our good friends at Greensmith Farm CBD. And right now you can get 20% off your order with code Funches at checkout. Go to Greensmith Farms Hemp Dot com and enter code Funches at checkout for twenty percent off your order. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Thank you for watching it. Whoever does, thank you to the person who stopped me after my show at the comedy store the other day when I was walking down the street trying to get green blasts, even though I didn't know they closed at eight. That's a whole nother matter. Green blast, you an institution. You need to be open later. But Either way, the guy stopped me on the street, told me he saw me on the Whitney Cummins podcast, that I was hilarious, and that my wife is hot. And if there's, no, I don't know any other compliment that a man wants to hear more than those two things, that you're good at your job and that you got the ability to pull an attractive member of whoever you are sexually attracted to. Those are, those are the goals we all set in life, right? I think so. That's what we want, unless you want to be alone or you are asexual and you have other goals that's fine but for me when i was a kid i wanted to have a hot lady and be funny and now i got both so that makes me feel good <laughs> so thank you for telling me that also i'm getting back on the road i don't know if you heard but my show diarrhea slides is on hiatus so <laughs> I got to get back on the road. Uh, we go into Austin, Texas, July 1st through the 3rd. Come and see me there, please. I will also be in Portland, Oregon, Baltimore, Maryland, Nashville, uh, many, many places. Go to bronfunches.com to get tickets. Please come and see me out on the road. Other than that, let's get into it, shall we? I hope you're feeling strong. I hope you're feeling brave. Hope you're feeling love and grateful for that love. I hope you are having good times in your life. I hope if you are a graduate of a high school, middle school, college, whatever this year, I hope you are feeling confident in your abilities that you were able to make it through this pandemic and still stay focused on your tasks, stay focused on the job at hand and get it done. And in many ways, it feels like we're all graduating, right? From an era that we were in where we're all locked in our house and now things seem like they're getting a lot better, which is the name of the podcast. So that's fun that that worked out that way. Ah, but for me personally, I'm super stoked with my son, graduated from high school on Friday made me feel so good if you've never been to a high school graduation of someone who you have uh helped conceive it is the most amazing and boring uh event that you can go to it's like how could I be so enthralled at such a boring event it is incredible to be like oh my god look at my son walking down this <laughs> Field with a hat on and a gown on and a couple extra sashes because he did extra stuff. And then there's also like a couple other thousand people who did it that I don't give a fuck about at all. But <laughs> and that's life, but it's so beautiful. And all of it is like just really taking stock of um is how far we've come and you can too in, in your life uh personally you know we talked a lot about getting better and how my life is getting better for my son but you know when we're sitting back watching him graduate it took me back to the beginning it took me back to when i was 20 years old I was when my son was born I was big still you know 
not too much has changed. Big Pa Head, uh, not very active uh, at that time, very obese, just didn't know how to raise a kid at all, was not very good at it at that point, didn't know how to take care of anybody, uh, didn't, especially when I find out my son with special needs, um, and at the time I was running away from responsibilities, running away from my own personal power, uh, was trying to live off of other people, moving around the Oregon coast, moving around living with relatives instead of trying to lead and, and, and take care of my responsibilities and it, it was a bad time and it was a, a, a stressful time not knowing uh, to wake up every day with a you know this time I didn't have a bank account a bank account was the furthest thing from no how could I the one I had when I was a teenager was super negative so you tell me I gotta go pay that off so I can get another bank account you sound like an idiot right now I will stay at this check cash in place sir pay them the three <laughs> percent and struggling not knowing literally every day having to figure out oh do not do i have enough money do i have enough cans do i have enough soda pop cans underneath my fucking cabinet drawer to go get something to totino's pizza to try to feed my son that's stressful that was very stressful every day dealing with that and then Finding my career path, finding a way that I'm going to take care of my son, having people tell me that it's not feasible, that it's not for real, that it's not going to help out, that if anything is a detriment to my family, for me to pursue my comedy and to pursue my career, for my marriage to fall apart, and be negative, be full of mistrust and anger, and just be in a, a toxic relationship in general, and then having to get full custody of my son and move him out to Los Angeles with me, not knowing I had at that point, I barely, I was out here for a couple years sending money back home. And then I got to bring him to, to my little apartment. I got to suddenly pull my shit together, get a two bedroom apartment, put him in there and it's me and him. And I didn't have money then. I didn't have no assistance then. My mom had to help me out. Fans and family had to help me out. Comedians at the comedy store and the improv and on the road have watched my son for me while I'm doing sets. And I appreciate that very much. It takes a village for real. And especially my son's teachers. Ms. Valadez, Ms. Mahoney, all the good people. I probably should mention their name because then you know what school he went to. But he don't go there no more. I guess it's okay. <laughs> But even that journey of learning, and this is something that I usually kept private of when I got custody of my son. Before I got my son, um, he was homeschooled, uh, and we do a lot of online classes in Oregon, and um, I was doing a lot of the, the, of the uh, lesson plan and, and that and my ex-wife. And then um, when I got my son and would go and enroll him in school out here, I find out he, not, he had not been going to school. He had not been in, 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 in enrolled in school since I had been, since I had left that household. And that was insane to find out and had to figure out and how to get him tested and get him all set up to go to school here in California. And we're lucky that it, lucky that it was right at that middle school time so that I could catch him, help him, get him in his IEP, and then watch him flourish and he truly has now he's held a 3.5 gpa through all four years of high school he's just a a, a person that that the other students and the teachers look out to 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 help to be a helper that's what my son is a helper and he's a good person he's smart and he's a hard worker and he never gives up and he's come so far and then so have i coming here from just being a, a, a scared obese man to having my own home and having my health together, having my life together, being confident as a father, being confident as an actor, being confident in stand up to the point where I don't even give a fuck. I'm, I'm so uncompetitive right now because you know what? Because I don't get my joy from stand up and from work anymore. I get my joy from my fucking life in general. And that is the major change. And that, I think, is the secret. And that's why I guess I shouldn't tell you. But it is, I think people need to know. When you got that full balance, 
kind of makes you feel undefeatable. Because it's like, what can you do? I have a bad set. You don't hire me for a job. 40 people get diarrhea on my water park show and they got to shut it down for weeks. Yeah, 40. I'm still smiling. (laughs) I'm still happy because I love my life. I love my wife. I love my son. And I appreciate Oh, how how much they've got my back. And this week has really um, solidified that. But who's got my back, my wife in particular, um, and who's got my son's back? And so I just, uh, I guess I just want to share with you that, like, find your joy, find your happiness, find that little thing that you're building up day by day, that constant effort, that constant work that people don't see. You know, people are like, oh, I seen you on this. I seen you on your show. I've seen you on that. But what they didn't see is me coming home and then going straight to helping my son with his homework or going, having to come home from the comedy store at one and 30 in the morning and get up at six to make this motherfucker a bacon sandwich and making sure he get on the school bus in the morning. And those are the things that I'm proud of. I'm proud of the uh, people I've worked with, things I've done too, but the t- honestly, I can't remember most of them because I'm a big stoner. But I do remember helping my son every day. I will always remember him walking down and picking up his diploma. And I will always remember just watching him taking his pictures and being happy and being proud and seeing the look on his face. And that's the biggest accomplishment I've ever had. Getting a full son at 20 years old, becoming a full-time single dad when he's 12, 13 years old, and then making sure he still graduated high school, making sure that he has a nice home to be in, making sure that this is only the beginning. We're still going to continue to push for him to go to better programs, better schools, and get um, more independent lifestyle. And if it, and hopefully one day he'll be living on his own, but if he's living with me and my wife for the rest of our lives, we'll be okay with that too because I love my life. And it, that takes constant work, constant molding, constant guidance and being on top of things. But also it's very simple. I'm listening to a lot of Larry June and he break it down very easy. Like, hey, drink water, be around the people you like, smoke a little weed and work out. And things, things seem to work out. Be honest. Be a good person. Very simple. Very boring. But it's what you do every day. And it seems like it, uh, it's making my life better. Well, who knows? We'll see about next week. <laughs> Either way, I'm so blessed to have a beautiful relationship with my my wife. Who I mean, I just want to get a second side shout out to my wife Christina, who's been there and been supportive for me and came in and put that shine on the, on my life. She glossed it up. She made everything easier and made and lifts me up. And I appreciate that so much and truly, truly has my family's back. It is a Funches for sure. She is a Funches and I appreciate it. And I hope you got somebody on your, on your team like that. And if you don't feel like that, find them. Don't settle. Even if they laying less next to you right now and you listening to this secretly in bed and you feeling a tinge from me saying this. It's going to hurt, but listen to it. (laughs) I'm sorry for breaking you up. (laughs) Uh, But then you can find a great, great, great relationship. Like our guest today. Someone who, uh, I mean, wow, you know, was in a, a total negative situation through chaos, through losing a loved one through losing a wife and then an angel was brought into their lives. And I think this is cool. Cause I don't even know if they have ever heard another podcast where there's an interview with the both of them talking together. So this will be pretty fun. Our guests this week are Patton Oswalt and the angel 
Meredith Salinger. Enjoy it. Ron, you are part of a long line of openers I've had. You, John Mulaney, Kyle Kinane, um, and now pretty soon um, Orlando Leba that clearly as as we as you would open for me i would just go there this guy's going to be headlining like uh, this guy's not going to be opening for me much longer and i'm actually happy about that so i'm glad that you're like that's one of my few skills i can brag about i can always pick openers and i know in a in a couple of years not like five years in a couple of years i got to call dave and go yeah let's get someone else to open because this dude needs to be headlining and it's actually making it harder for me on the road <laughs> so good. and it was just you know, so I'm, I'm glad that you're part of that wonderful tradition i love being part of that tree i'm well aware of it orlando and i talk about it often and i think it's another i think that is a beautiful talent to be to know talent when you see it and to not Mm -hmm. be afraid of it until you right right to be afraid of it no (laughs) it was it's not that i got afraid of it it was just that wait a minute i can't i can't re-win the crowd over from zero after after Ron finishes, and you can literally feel the crowd like, oh, that, that's it? Wait, no, 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 no. And then I come out, hi, everyone. And so like, oh, yeah, let's get yeah. someone else. Well, so, that's yeah. the sweet spot when you're doing that 2025 and you're, oh my and, it's, God. and it's a constraint for you. Boom, like, oh, boom, that's so boom. fun. That's, yeah. I wanna, I'm not there now, so I want <laughs> I can't wait to get back to that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's oh going back though, right? Aren't aren't all of you stand up people yeah, like starting again in October or something? We're all starting. I mean, I'm going back in the fall. Other people are on the road now, and the comedy store is doing sets inside the club, and so is the Laugh Factory. So is the Improv. So you know, but there's still really good outdoor shows happening, which especially during the summer, I think that's fun. Well, I just those are love- fun. They're absolutely fun. I yeah, just think yeah. it's a great reset time where people are just back doing it because they're passionate about it and, and starting over. And it takes so much strength to kind of start over and be like, I know I'm yeah. not going to be good for a while. That's why it was such a <laughs> thing in myself to be like, oh, I don't know what the clothes on at all. And I just go, oh, you don't have a closer. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, my God. I realized that I was doing that supernova comedy and i had this this weird panic moment i was only doing 10 minutes but i it was that thing of oh wait i, I don't have a new clothes i don't really know i so i did one of those sets where you go well that's it good night and then you just kind of walk off it feels really weird to do that it does but it's okay i talked about it because it reminded me of when i went to the first time i went to a restaurant since i went to the pandemic and the waiter was not good they forgot most <laughs> of my stuff i didn't get an item <laughs> but they were nice and they were like, and I still tipped them to 25% because I was like, oh, I yeah. get it. You're working yeah. your way back into it. And you and I need that same courtesy right now. When I'm oh my say. God. You you were as supportive as an open mic artist for that. That that was that waiter's <laughs> open mic. He was like trying out new stuff. Oh, that's right. I gotta bring the beverage. And you were I'll being a good it. good audience member. Yeah, yeah you're like, being, it's yeah. awesome. If you bring me, that's a good premise, bringing me the yep. appetizer. I like that. <laughs> cold, I wouldn't have liked it cold. That's not a good punchline, but you know, work through it. And the other waiters are all in the back of the room going, this customer doesn't get it. He's, he's so brilliant what he's doing right now. He's totally deconstructing. He's bringing out the dessert first. Oh, this is so genius. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, let me interview you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you do that. Sorry, let me show. start my podcast. Uh, Pat, you've right. been here before, Meredith. You're a first time guest. I'm a first time <laughs> guest. I'm so excited. I love it. It's my first time, I think, interviewing a full couple. And oh, mm-hmm. Mary, there's so we many are, things. We are a full couple. That, I, that's for sure. You <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Yes, we are. <laughs> But before I get into the couple aspect, Mary, I didn't know you went to Harvard and all these other things. I did not know you were such a uh, smarty like, pants. Yeah, <laughs> smarty I'm pants. A smarty pants. Ridiculous. Yeah. Is you said um, hot- you're like a, I forgot the exact term. Like you, maybe you tell me. I will just go back and look because it was right What's in the front term? of me. Said you that you uh, are a mediator for dispute resolution. Oh my gosh. Okay, Ron. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that I've been an actress since I was 10 years old and I 
uh, you know, this business is up and down and in and out, and you could be the star of something one day and a guest a thing the other day. And, and in around 2008, 2009, I was sort of having like a little bit of a lull as an actress. And my parents are academics and, and doc, you know, smart people. And they're like, my dad is like, you are too smart to be just babysitting or maybe even going to be a waitress or whatever. You need to be doing something else. You got your degree in psychology. You need to have something else to fall back. You know, I think every parent, every single parent of an artist has that worry for their children. Mm -hmm. You need to have something to fall back on. And so um, because I had a background in psychology, I and, you know, my parents got divorced when I was five. So I was always like, the mediator between the parents and the mediator between my sister and my parents. And the, you know, I was always the, you know, the peacemaker amongst everyone in my life. And so I, I went to um, Pepperdine Law School, had a, um, a dispute resolute, uh, uh, Strauss Institute of Dispute Resolution. And I um, went there and I, I studied and I got my degree, my certificate in mediation. And I went and did about 200 cases pro bono across um you know, the Van Nuys courthouse, the downtown courthouse, Beverly Hills courthouse, Santa Monica courthouse. And then I was, and then I was hired by a firm to be on the firm. And I did one case with them. And then um, I was still auditioning and everything. And then I got asked, uh, then I booked a series that was 80 episodes. So I was like, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're an actor, you want to be, you know, that's your passion. That's your thing. And as much as I loved it and it was inspiring and um, invigorating um, now, I just am like, my friends are like, don't you do that? And I said, listen, let me tell you what to do. Call these people at this agency. They'll help you. But no, I don't do that anymore. But I did it for a few years in while I was auditioning, you know, like mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I would go and do it for free at the courts. But well, otherwise I was acting. This is so interesting to me and the comment right away, Pat, I see easily quite, I mean, I already knew, but just within this, for that answer and that question, so easy to fall in love with. It's how oh could you God. not? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> well, what was, you know, what was weird was the way we fell in love was purely through conversation and not even face-to-face -face conversation. It was absolutely texting. through texting. And that was, it was just two pure minds meeting. So it was just, the minds for like three months and I'm not exaggerating three months. We never even thought to give each other our phone number so that we could call each other. We just, and we, and we did this night. two hours every night. We every were night. texting two hours every single night. We met through a mutual friend. Um, it was random. Well, we missed we... meeting through a mutual friend, which is how we right. met, weirdly enough. My friend her... Martha Plimpton had a dinner party at her house and she invited about 15 people on a text thread on Facebook. And everybody went except Patton. And after the dinner party, I had texted on the thread, um, best dinner party ever. Dude, you missed the best fucking lasagna. Mm. And um, and then we started. He happened to be online at the same time. And we ended up DMing back and forth for like two hours. And he was like, I have to put my daughter to bed. But this was fun. Same time tomorrow. And I was like, all right. So then we just started talking and it was not flirty. It was just like Trump had yeah. just been elected, inaugurated. It was a tragedy. And we were like, holy shit, he's a fucking Russian spy. Um, <laughs> you know, we were just talking about yeah. stuff like that. And then it moved to like, this reminds me of this, this book, uh, Fletch, where there's like, he told me about this book. And I was like, isn't it interesting how the journalism and how they're trying to stop the journalists and it was just a meeting of the minds and it kept going. And then about two months into it, I was like, he's lovely. I like him. <laughs> and yeah. And then I was so worried I wasn't going to like him. Like I loved him and I thought he was brilliant and smart and great. But mm. I was so worried that when I met him in person, I was going to be like, oh, there's no chemistry. And I was like yeah. anxious and because I'd been single for so long prior to meeting him and just always thought like, there's no one. I mean, if it's not going to be Obama, I don't want to marry anyone. <laughs> I only want to marry Obama. I love him so much. I love him and Michelle together. I'm not trying to separate them. I'm right. just saying if it's not as good as Obama, it's not happening. And that's a high bar. Clearly the highest bar. On <laughs> Earth. Um, I'm madly in love with him. Patton knows. Anyway, and yeah. I met Patton and I was just like, oh, my God, you're just brilliant and lovely and kind and thoughtful and smart and funny. And and then I fell in love, and I fell in love and he's so cute. 
<laughs> it is true. I agree yeah. with that. It's pretty cute. Uh, and for you, I don't want to put any words in your mouth at all. But um, I imagine, you know, since since you had, had lost your, your wife at that time, that it was mm-hmm. much as, as a just a lighthouse for you to have. The, like, oh, this feels. This is. I'm feeling shitty. Twenty three hours a day, maybe. <clears throat> you tell me. I'm not because now I'm comedy. No, too that's it. That is a great way to put it. You know, one of the things I missed most, I mean, I missed so much stuff about Michelle, but what I missed was that end of the day talking in the dark with with a really, just an amazing, agile mind that was, you know, that would inspire you more than you were inspiring them. And so the fact that it all happened accidentally through this dinner party that didn't happen and then a, just a very fun kind of goofy text, I oh, missed some great lasagna. And then it just built so organically and real and it became this oh i'm i i would look forward to the end of the day putting alice down now it's nine o'clock and i'm going to talk in the dark with this amazing person and it was you know that that was that was like the light that led me back out into the fully lit world because i was not in the fully lit world and you know meredith was the was the guide back to it oh yeah it's pretty amazing it was amazing (laughs) by the way um this just happened like an hour ago i went down to the lobby of my hotel because there's a package for me. And I was just, it was just a mail and I was picking up. And the woman that was giving it to me at the front desk, her name was Andrea, very nice woman. And she was like, um, <clears throat> she goes, here's your package. I go, thanks. I'm turning away. She goes, excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, can I ask you something? I said, yeah. She goes, are you married to Meredith Salinger? <gasps> are you and kidding? I, said, I go, I go, yeah, I am. And she's like, she was my jam in the 80s. That movie, Dream a Little Dream. Oh my God, my friends and I, we would watch that all the time and we wanted to be Lainey <laughs> Diamond so bad. And mm-hmm. so, oh my God, I can't believe you're married to Meredith Sound. That is so cool. And I go, well, thanks. And then I was, I, I go, well, have a great day and turn away. And then she's like, what was your name again? Go, oh, <laughs> no way. No, no, way. I'm, I, no, no, that's exactly what just happened. Andrea down in the front desk and it was, and the reason why she, she didn't she, know your name she, is because your mail is to a fake name. It's not to name. your name. It's but also basically it was a Mr. Meredith Salinger moment. In oh, the I lobby love that. My hotel. So oh, my God. That's go. crazy. My high school what? yearbook. Um, mm-hmm. You know how it's like most likely to. Mm-hmm. Mine said most likely to attend the Oscars with Mr. And at the time, my boyfriend's name was Jason. Mr. J. Salinger. Mr. Uh. Sal- <laughs> most likely to like like they took my name like that's what a boss i am (laughs) there you go (laughs) (laughs) well i also my one thing i like about you that john about you is that you um you seem to have such a great balance especially as someone who who's been acting since they were a child to have this Mm -hmm. mindset of like it ebbs and flows it goes and and comes in like you never know what number in the call sheet you'd be and and I think mm-hmm. there's so many. Oh, you see, kind of, you know, a split where some people were born and knew it, and they they never know the real world. But it seems like you have this um, real knowledge and balance with you. Is that something that was just embedded with you and your family, or where do you think that comes from? Well, I definitely am not from a. I, I'm from. My dad's a dentist. My mom was an interior decorator. I. I education. They're both well educated. Super important in my family. My sister's very smart. You know, like we're. I didn't come from an artist family, even though they all have some sort of like my dad's into music, my mom's into painting, like that kind of stuff. Um, But what you said about understanding the ebb and flow of it, it, my parents didn't push me into it. I happened to go to elementary school with the little girl who played Carrie on um, Little House on the Prairie. (laughs) You know, there was Mary, there was Mary and then there was Half Pint and there was Carrie. She and I were in the same class and I slept over at her house and I was like, I want to be an actress. I was eight years old. And then she gave me her, her mom gave my mom her agent's name and, and that lady signed me right there. So it wasn't like this huge, like, I mean, I'm from Malibu. Yeah. It was pretty easy <laughs> yeah. for me. And, um, and what you said about ebb and flow and understanding it, you know, and not knowing what number you are on the call sheet, when you start as number one on the call sheet, which I did, I mean, I was in the movie Annie and I did some things before I did the journey of Natty Gann, but, um, my first big starring role, you know, you're number one and then your next movie you get offered and you're number one and you're number one and you, you know, and then you go off to college and you take four years off and then people are like, wait, what? And then you're like number four on the call sheet or you're the best friend. And then it's very hard. And I, I imagine a lot of child actors, why 
there are so many drug problems and deaths and all this among child actors is because you're so cute when you're young and you get so much attention and you're, you're the star of that show. And then it goes away and a lot of people can't take it or don't have supportive parents or an education or things to ground them. Mm -hmm. And they veer into the drug thing. Um, But for me, yes, I was able to sort of understand that like, okay, (laughs) you're going to be this and that. And truthfully, it's, it's a lot more fun sometimes to be number seven on the call <laughs> oh sheet. God. You don't, it's not so much pressure. And as I move into like adult woman, white woman who's over 50, it's like, you know, there's not tons of roles, but the ones that are, are brilliant, like Jean Smart and Margot Martindale. Like these are women yeah. that I aspire to have careers. Like I want to have those kind of careers. I don't need to be, I don't need to be the number one. I want to just ha- do good work. And so, yeah, the ebbs and flows. Yes. I it happens. M- Meredith has that advantage of she's been doing it so long that it she doesn't take it personal. It's a it there, there's stuff that's just outside your control. And it took me way longer to learn that where she's like, this is a job. Yes, it's artistic. Yes, it's creative. But it's ultimately that it's, this is still a business. You need to be a professional. And the way the way that she approaches that and the way that I see her prepare auditions and stuff, mm-hmm. um, sometimes keeping it more business like helps you do a better performance because I think a lot of times, and I've been guilty of this, when you get so personally wrapped up in the thing that you actually lose perspective of, you need to show up every day and do a job. You can't, you know, put it all on, you can't slide all your chips on one square and then spin it. That's all I got. Man. No, no. The people, they actually, people who make movies and TV want the people that know how to show up and just deliver. Yeah. But then once without, you're there, without ripping up, their skin off, you know? Yeah. But once you show up, <laughs> then, then you're totally into it. Like I can't, no, nobody yeah. I know can be on set. Like my mom used to be like, I want to watch the scene. I said, if I see you behind right. the camera, I will go, Oh, I'm Meredith. And if you're not there, then I can be whoever I need to be. And I couldn't, I, I'd be like, mom, you got to leave. You got to leave. So, I mean, I was a child actor. She had to be on set. <laughs> Greatest mom. But, but she didn't have to be like, she could be in a different room. I didn't, while right. I was filming, I just could not have her. But yeah. Well, I just think I'm very interested in that because Tim, as a guy who it loves professional sports, and it's so interesting to me when you have people who peak career wise at like 22 24 and then they have to refine what their lives is yeah. at like 35 36 30 yeah. oh my god to me to do that and be like well now i have to do that at 18 17 like because i'm not that yeah. i look completely different from that kid that mm-hmm. they hired that's right that's, to me is so you have to have such a strong base and and to make it through that to me, that seems like yeah. a lot of hard work. Yeah. I think yeah. because I think because I went to college and all my friends are just one's a doctor, one's head of Goldman Sachs, one, you know, everybody is so like the art, the art thing feels like you can do it. But if you're, if I just felt like there was always an Avenue out if I had to, but I never had uh, just for that short period of time, um, and I was still during that time when I was doing mediation, I was still doing voiceovers and little spots, little acting spots here and there, but it wasn't like the big stuff. So, yeah. but yeah, I'm, I'm lucky that I didn't That's feel interesting that like when you, the, the way you brought up sports, because, you know, unlike acting where acting, you can age and age into different kinds of roles and just yeah, work sports, forever you if, if you're, if you want to. So yeah, right. Some people can, some people white knuckle their youth and they don't let themselves you know, European actresses are so much better at going, no, I'm 50 now. I'm going to do like, and, and, and it, because they're so comfortable, they're so much more vivacious on screen, mm-hmm. but an athlete, it is, that is truly physics. You have the narrowest window to be at your prime. And if anything goes wrong, like you're putting all your chips on one thing. And if you blow out a knee or rip a ACL, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. And, and, and a lot of times the thing that makes you a great athlete can make you a not great human because you don't know how to deal with the outside world. That Michael Jordan documentary is fascinating because the thing that made him the champion that he was is what makes the rest of his life kind of a mess Mm -hmm. that I must compete all of the time, no matter what it's, it's this weird driven thing, but it was great when he was playing basketball, it was great, but you know, sometimes that can ruin you. So like someone like Meredith who has that balance you know, that's you want to try to achieve that. 
in the long I, run. I agree with that. I think you see that high key all the time in comedy where people are so obsessed and so focused oh, on God. like special getting special, getting this, getting that, that you don't. Um, that's the thing I've been telling myself over and over lately is like, cause I remember I would see people who I thought were very successful and see still how they were unhappy and they were complaining. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I just be like, I told myself like, you gotta know when you've won. Know when you've won. <clears throat> and well, I have my wife, I have my house, I have my son get graduated yeah. from high school. I'm like, I win. If I never get another <laughs> special, if I never in another movie, I've won. It's all right, good right. from here. I, I, that makes me think of, I was at lunch with my, one of my best friends in seventh grade. And I was like fat and unemployed and living in an apartment with my cat. And we were at lunch and my sister's very <laughs> successful. And um, my best friend was like, I mean, how are you so happy? You're fat and unemployed. You live. And I was like, I know. She goes, imagine how happy you'll be when you get married and fall in love. And I, and I was like, I know. She's like, but I felt like I had won even then. Right. Even I remember I, the, the. Well, I was also like made there were moments of complete depression. of course, but, <laughs> but generally, I was a happy person who had I love my friends and their children. And I just. I can find the happy during the depression too. Like there are moments like, you know, but I'm just saying winning is fun. (laughs) Even when you're losing. Like insane moments of depression. But I, I remember very clearly in 1993 was the first year that I was able to do comedy and just pay the bills doing comedy. I made $11,000 that year, but, and I was living hand to mouth in an apartment with four, but all I had to do was do comedy. And to me, that felt like such a victory after doing it for seven years at that point that I'm like, oh, my God, this is the first year that all I had to do was do comedy and I'm earning money. So every, everything after that's been gravy for me. Like I could just, you know, pay my bills with comedy. I'm good. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. It makes the whole I think once you like start to achieve anything and then you wake up and you go, Oh, there's always the next day. There's always another thing to accomplish <laughs> that like, you have to like, I have to just be happy with this whole process. I have to be happy mm-hmm. with my life. And, um, that's been a big part of now where like I can, you know, it used to be, I'd lived or die by my set. If I had a bad set, I was so, Oh God, me too. Everything. What was even worse was, I would live and die by my bad sets, but I would also get too high on my good sets as if I would go and do a set at the improv and really annihilate. And they'll walk around like, well, everything's changed now after that set. It's like, <laughs> no, you have to wake up tomorrow and do it. Like nothing changed. People are still going the on with their, <laughs> and then you bomb the next day. It's just, okay, whatever. You know, like they, you just have to enjoy that, that you get to hang out with comedians. It's the best. Yeah. Enjoy people's minds. It's a fun yes. existence to have. I, I think that's that. what you were saying that you hated so much about coronavirus and not touring was that it wasn't so much. Well, yes, of course, being on stage, thrills you but you loved being backstage and just hanging with your people i loved the hang i missed the hang so much i missed yeah. the being on the road and then i also missed doing sets in town to get ready for the road and you're backstage and there's oh my god there's mark Marin. you know there's uh blank patch there's mm-hmm. sarah, sarah silverman we're all just talking like everyone's hanging out like i oh i, I need that energy and we also we bounce off of each other. Hey, that one joke, you know, you, you, know what you might want to add to the end of that. Like, oh, yes, that's, oh my God, it was right. Th-, you know, like you yeah, need that, that collaborative stuff. thing with oh, someone. Oh, it's the yeah. best. Yeah, especially now if it, been, you don't know and people, it was been a lifesaver for me. I'll just get props right now. Anthony Jeselnik, we've been oh. uh, such a wonderful time. He even came by. He said was like an hour after mine. He was like, I just wanted to come by and say hi to you. And oh. I was like, man, oh, you're my the sweetest. God. You're a great guy. And then just talking with him about like being like, oh, I don't have any material and he's like i don't have any material (laughs) (laughs) and And by the way and and anthony is a joke smith i have i haven't seen anyone since ema phillips who so crafts jokes where there is literally not an extraneous word they're so perfect so for him to be going on stage going i don't have anything right now anthony's not the kind of guy that's like let's just go on stage and see what happens he brings you the top shelf, like the Wagyu beef of jokes. It is, everything is trimmed so perfectly. And other comedians are just watching and just go, are you 
fucking kidding me? Like that was so that's very reassuring that you know yeah. that's what he's doing, you know? Absolutely. Or if he goes, I like this premise or that. It's been very helpful in that regard. And just oh, talking yeah. about uh even still taking breaks where I was like, I don't want to get back to how I was feeling where I, where I could feel this like a almost animalistic aggressiveness of these <laughs> sets of like I, well I, that's not enough I don't know so I like I took a week off last week because it was my mom's birthday and I mm-hmm. hadn't seen her in a year and so I was like I just want to hang oh, out with my family uh and he was like yeah just take a week off <laughs> like, <laughs> I just hear I, it's nice it's just nice I feel like a lot of um Especially since a lot of people moved and everything. I feel like the yes. people who are still here are very much like passionate about making sure that uh, we get. And also, I was like, my whole career has kind of been through a golden era. I like to live through a <laughs> non-golden era. That's not, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's what Meredith's been saying. Later in the summer, we're going to take a trip just because it's not a work trip. Just go somewhere that neither of us have been and wander around and let it refuel us creatively. Just one of the it, that sounds like, like I'm just going to go hang on with my family. There's no agenda here. I, I, does it, it's not yeah. helping my career. That is so helpful. It's so rare when I feel like I can take a vacation like for that. I, like you got some gigs in Hawaii over New Year's Eve. And I was like, great, we can go on vacation because you're going to be working there and I'll feel secure about that. Or Mm -hmm. I used to sit home being like, well, I can't take a vacation because I'm going to get a show and I can't leave. And I always and then I would do like a movie in Australia. And I'm like, there we go. I'm living in (laughs) Australia. This is this is my vacation or I have to go uh, on a press tour in Europe. And I'm like, this is my vacation, but I'm working. So I don't feel guilty about taking the vacation it's not a vacation, it's work, but you know, you enjoy the thing. And it's very hard for me to go on vacation and have it just be vacation. I don't know. I just, I guess it's because that fear of like, when, when there's like the six month break between a job or the three month break. And you're like, I can't, if I knew, like, if I was on a series and they're like, our hiatus is three months, we're going to be back in August. Then I'd be like, Great, let's go on vacation. I can play knowing there's something waiting for you. But when you're not on a series and you just do movies or you, you know, it's very scary to not have that thing there. And you, for me personally, yes, I need a vacation so badly, Pat, and I'm going to freak out. (laughs) I've never been. Although I will say Meredith has a no fail ability to book a vacation and then a a job job lands in her. That's everybody. That's Murphy's law. But she's really good at that. I I, I had this amazing tour of Europe two summers ago that when she was going to, we were like, oh my God, this is going to be great. And then she got handed this amazing Amazing pilot that she could not say no to as a pilot. And if it had gone, it, it, it ended up not going. But even then it was like, getting to work with the people she got to work with. She had, she could not do it. I couldn't not go to London Oh God! and I was, was so, and I wanted to go so badly <laughs> and we were so excited and planning it forever. And then like a week before they're like, you got this show and it's going to go to, and I was like, Oh my God, this is a dream come true. Yeah. Uh, it really was. I played Sue yeah. Mengers in this, um, <laughs> in this show, um, which you know how Mad Men was about ad agencies in the fifties. Mm-hmm. This was about talent agencies in the seventies. And oh. I, and I, played Sue Mengers with huge glasses and long nails and a blonde wig. And she oh, was the best character ever. And I just wanted to be her forever. This is a woman who would sit in her bed and roll calls while she's smoking a joint and doing her paperwork in bed. And literally that's me. <laughs> <laughs> she was this, she was this incredibly like legendary agent. That was this figure in Hollywood. She very famously the day after the Manson murders, uh, Barbara Streisand, who she was Barbara Streisand's agent, and Barbara Streisand called and her best friend and best friend. But Barbara called her up and said, "Do you hear what's happening? My God, she's like, I, I got to get extra security. And then she, <laughs> she went, don't worry, Barbara, they're only killing B actors. <laughs> just, like, they're not going to map you. It was just it, it was so vicious, but it was also kind of true. So like it, just these great and she and like Robert Evans apparently were these um, these legendary frenemies that would just go at each other all day. She's the top agent. Yeah. At the number one female agent all over the world. Basically, she had Mick Jagger and uh, everyone. Every she had everybody. 
Uh, anyway, let's not talk about her. But she's amazing, oh. and I love her, and I wish I could be her. And I think I am her in real life anyway. I suddenly became like this boss over coronavirus. I went yeah. from being like just an actress as we went into coronavirus and came out with producing two shows and doing a podcast with Patton and doing all this stuff for political packs. And uh, it got asked to be an advisor of a tech company. I mean, it's bizarre. I don't know what happened this year, but I've never been busier. And that's why I feel like I can take a vacation. Hey guys, it's me, it's Ron. Thank you to our sponsor, Greensmith Farm CBD, for supporting the podcast. They make the best all-natural craft hemp CBD products, including CBD oil and gummies. And they sent some to me to your boy. And I've been chewing on them gummies, and I've been taking them oils. After a hard workout, after a long, stressful day, if my back is aching, you know, we're popping a little bit of that CBD, and I've been enjoying it. So if you yourself wanted to try CBD, but you didn't know where to start or what you might be buying, Greensmith's Farm is a perfect place to try CBD for yourself. The packaging tells you exactly how much CBD and other cannabinoids you are getting and how much is in each serving. There is lab certification for all their products posted on the website and even link to every QR code code. Many people have reported that Greensmith CBD products has helped them focus, relax, get better sleep. And that's what I have been using it for. All their products are made from hemp grown on their family farm in West Virginia, and they are always free of pesticides and other chemicals. That's pretty cool. I like that very much. It's all natural, full spectrum, and better for you. Know what you are putting in your body. And for listeners of the Getting Better podcast, you can get 20% off your order with code FUNCHES at checkout. That's a good code. That's a easy to remember code. Go to greensmithfarmshemp.com com and enter that code of funches for 20 percent off your order that is green smith farms hemp.com funches is the code to get you 20 percent off at checkout you know we're all about getting better and getting our help when we need it and so i want to thank our sponsor over at better help and they want to know what interferes with your happiness what's stopping you from achieving your goals i used to be a self-sabotager constant overeater things that just didn't believe in myself do i really gotta bring it up i guess i got to because it helps other people better help will help assess you and your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist you can connect in a safe and private online environment it's so convenient that you can start communicating in under 48 hours but they want to specify that it is not a crisis line it's not a self-help line it is a professional counseling done securely online they have professional counselors that specialize in depression anger stress family conflicts and anxiety lgbt matters grief self-esteem sleeping trauma and much more and i want to say I personally want to help you out. Start getting your better life going on today. You know I believe in good mental health. And so do the people at BetterHelp. So as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at BetterHelp.com slash functions. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash funches for 10 percent off your first month <laughs> <laughs> although wait a minute wait a minute remember how i think it was your mom or your friend said you're not going to find a man sitting at home in your pajamas and that is how you found a man you're not going to get your career going just stuck in your house but then that's how you're that's yeah. this whole crazy second chapter happened because you were trapped in your house i know isn't that weird oh my god yeah, my nice jewish mother she's like you got it <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go out. I just want to sit at home and eat ice cream and I'm good. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you're never going to meet anyone. I was like, I've been on seven billion blind dates. I've gone with I've gone on every web, blah, 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 whatever. She's like, you're not going to meet someone in your pajamas. And literally, I was in bed texting and that's how we started. <laughs> and then for three months, I just stayed at home texting him in my pajamas. Yeah. It was the greatest thing ever. That makes <sighs> sense to me. I mean, I don't want to discredit your mom. I'm assuming she's right on many things. But to me, <laughs> if you are a person that likes to go out, then, yeah, find a person 
out. Uh-huh. But if you are a person that where y- your ideal day is at home in your pajamas eating ice cream, the person that you want to be with is probably at home in their pajamas <laughs> eating ice cream. You know what? Oh, my God. That's pretty fucking funny. Patton, that is funny. Someone should start a new dating app that that caters to that specific group. It's the, I don't know what they would Hermits. call it, but it's for, yeah, the, the her, Hermit. Oh my God. Call it Hermit, lowercase. Hermit.com. H-E, Hermit.com. And do you just want to stay at home and talk people with and your, like text with someone? Meet other people with your non interests. Like, yeah. you know what? Are you not up for it? I'm not up for it either. So, well, need somebody general, to watch 90 Day Fiance with? <laughs> yeah. In general, I love, I'm a very social person. I'm not, particularly a hermit in any way not like Patton who's like a full-blown troll oh, I'm a hermit. but I am. yeah oh but I'm God. very social but I think I had been on so many dates that I was like I just I it's I'm I have no interest to me I don't care if I ever find anyone anymore I've got my friends and my family and their kids and I'm good mm-hmm. and then yeah and then happened to fall in love with this guy who apparently <laughs> is amazing <laughs> apparently she's still not 100 percent sure yet well i had so well, many we'll friends who were like oh my god he's my favorite comedian and then after knowing you i'm like really that's a, <laughs> that's a good thing i want to talk about with my wife as well because i think a, a couple of bumps that we had in the beginning of our relationship it was like me either assuming or or, or in the case of sometimes it being real her being like oh i think you're gonna be like this guy on stage all the time uh-huh. and i'm like no that's not that's me that's i reserve a, a, most of my energy for that and then i'm very relaxed i'm very shy i don't even like talking at dinner tables with more than <laughs> f- four people at them so because <sighs> So how do you like doing a podcast? How do you like being the person who has to be interviewing? Or does it just feel like it's like an intimate thing and then you can just chat with your friends? It's the same thing as stand up to me, where it's like if I'm in control, it's fine. I love being in control. So if I can set questions, if I can, uh, you know, if I'm in charge, I love it. That's what I love about stand up. But if it's like conversations are breaking down into different groups and I'm no longer the center of attention. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Then, then it's a I, thing. and also sometimes it's just easier to broadcast than it is to receive mm-hmm. because receiving means you've got to be open and vulnerable and it's not all about you and a lot of times well, i think one of my faults is if i'm not in the mood for it if i don't want to receive i just I receive I just shut down and I'm, oh and, and i look at my evil. friends who i know need to be the center of attention i give i give good audience i give good fan and i give good <laughs> i'm the wind beneath so many of my friends wings and if i know that you need this I'm going to give it to you so you're happy and then everything's better. I know how to do it. You see, I like to make sure other people are like their most comfortable. Well, I want to talk about a main question I had before we end up running out of time. Oh, okay. Main question. um, It's about like, I know one of the biggest parts of me getting married, my second marriage and, 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 really falling in love with this person with my wife Christina is not just how she treats me but how she treats my son and and the Mm -hmm. changes that she's made for me but I also know for her it's been um you know it's a hard transition to be like I I don't have the kid and all of a sudden I am a parent of a kid who is not yet fully formed but is formed a, a lot of the way and how do I go in there and add some things but not but and have ownership of this child because I love it. I know my wife loves my son to death or she wouldn't be with me. But then mm-hmm. sometimes she has to then step back and be like, well, you still make the choice here with him because he's, you oh. know, you were with him for 18 years. Right. And no, I no. Wasn't. <laughs> I, I know. I know it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody. But I just want to ask you what it's like um, coming in to end. I mean, I'll, that's you married at first and then Pat. And if you can yeah, ask yeah. what's meant for you. Uh, so tell um, me about it. Well, for first of all, you know, when you go to the American Girl doll store, do you know what that yes. is? It's like a store with dolls <laughs> and you can I'm get a doll. Chicago. Looks, I know you can about get it. a doll that looks just like you. Like you can get blue eyes and a little nose and you can do all that stuff and you can order it online. Like you want her to be sporty. You get her a sporty outfit, that kind of thing. I swear to God, Alice, I, I put into the universe my order and it just was like, 
here. She's perfectly formed. She's already amazing. And she's exact like she has the right amount of mischievousness and she's the right amount of snuggly. And she's just like perfectly funny and hilarious and got little attitude. She's I love her. She is my baby. Now, I realize if I say that people are like, you're not honoring Michelle. Michelle and I, (laughs) Michelle is like she we are a team. Like she did all that good work. She did everything she wanted to do in her life. She wrote her book. It went to the bestseller list. She caught a criminal. She made this baby. She had the love of her life. And she's like, I did the best stuff ever. I'm going to go up here. Here's the baton. You make sure she's amazing. (laughs) And and I'm like, I will. I will. I'm going to give her. And she's my baby. And. She's Michelle's baby, but she's also my baby. And and there's this like thing where people are like, oh, how's it being a stepmom? And I do not. I am not a stepmom. I'm her mom. And she also has a mom. No. But there's no it's not like Pat and I are married and there's another mom. Her mom <laughs> is like we get her on the weekends. I'm the stepmom. And then she goes to her real mom. She's my baby. And I need to take ownership of her or I don't think I could. I just, she's my baby. I, I feel it. I love her. I were two peas in a pod. It's the best relationship I could have ever asked for in my life. And I don't think I would have married Patton if I hadn't. Well, maybe I would have married you, baby. But when I met Alice, I was like, oh, she's everything I want to, I want mm-hmm. her. And yeah. Well, and then at I one know. point they wanted another baby. Like he was like, Alice wants a little sister or a little brother. And I was like, if I have another baby, then I'm going to give that baby all my attention. And mm-hmm. I just want to give, I just want to be with Alice. She's perfect. Literally like <laughs> you couldn't ask for a better kid. She does her homework. She's uh, anyway, I could go on and on. I could literally go on and on. Well, I think it makes perfect sense to me because she's also at an age where she, she, she would need, a, a, she still needs her mom for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, she, you know, as, as active and present as Meredith is with the parenting and being a mom, and she really is, and she's just so conscientious about it in, in ways that I I thought I was doing the best I could as a single dad. And then you <laughs> I'm shaking my head. Someone like- <laughs> that, yeah, that, no, that you totally up the game. But beyond the active present stuff, there's also the passive, just having Alice has this, um, model of of amazing behavior just to see and absorb through osmosis there are the lessons that that meredith gives her by going you know do this and make sure to do this and there's a lot of stuff that we you know you got to hammer over and over again when they get to that age but there's other there's unspoken stuff that meredith does the way that she treats her friends and the way that she approaches uh drama and and problems and and stuff like that that i i just see alice is absorbing that and that to me is so beyond i mean it, it's what makes her such a miracle it's so beyond what what i could what any what anyone could consciously do it's the just there thing, being modeled the funny thing this is interesting when i was first thinking about when i was first like talking to Patton and i was doing a little research and i had read about michelle and then i was like i just want to look her up on facebook and just see what her what her vibe was like what kind of girl is she and it turned out we had 12 mutual friends <laughs> One of whom happened to be my very best friend since seventh grade. And I was like, JJ, how how do you know Michelle? She's like, oh, she was my best friend after college. I, I was like, what is she like? She's She was like, she's just like us, meaning like a smart girl, a nice girl, a good girl. And sh- she's like, she's one of us. <laughs> And yeah. the minute she said that, it made me love Patton even more because, you know, there's guys who date girls that you know, are vapid and pretty and Mm -hmm. whatever. And it made me suddenly go, oh, he likes smart, nice girls. And it just so happened. So Michelle and I would have been friends. Like, I always feel like if I had seen her with Alice somewhere, I would have been like, your baby's so cute. Let me babysit. (laughs) They would have totally been friends. friends. And now that girl who is, who was best friends with me since seventh grade and best friends with Michelle since after college, her daughter and Alice are now best friends. Oh, well, yeah, it's really sweet. And her daughter is so cool. Her so daughter cool. is really cool. Yeah. 
Anyway. So, yeah. I mean, literally, you could spend three hours. I could. I'll shut up. Yeah. I know you have to do move on to the next topic, but no, I can talk about it. No, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> you can't. Uh-huh. <laughs> No, no, I know you got to read that Blue Apron ad. So let's do the Blue Apron ad. I don't want to, I don't want to cost you any money. (laughs) Well, I will talk about because I feel like the only thing, and I don't, excuse me if I cross any boundaries, but I remember when people were hearing about you getting together and you guys getting married, the only thing that, um, because we have mutual friends and, you know, and my, Mm -hmm. you know, Brian and Melanie and things like that, where people were just concerned about like, oh, is Patton moving too fast? Is he, is is he, is this a a trauma-based move? But one thing that I, I mean, I, you know, I, I met you, um, met the two of you later at a, hanging out together and knew right away from the moment I saw you together. I was like, Oh, they are just totally in love and just meant to be yeah. together. Um, but <laughs> my point of view from even before then was just like, it almost like, what, what would you prefer? Especially I think as, a, and I don't want to, I'll ask you instead of putting these words in your mouth, but to me, there had to be a bit about like, look, I'm a man with a, a daughter who's going to be a teenager. I don't have, I, I it'd be almost more trauma based to be that guy who goes like, okay, well now I am dating these models and doing these things yeah. because well, I could yeah. instead of like, I found a great person. I know right. it right away. Let me go lean into what feels good. Well, that's one of the benefits of being in, we were, we met in our, our late forties. I turned, you know, 50, I think a year after or two years. No, after. baby, you were 48 when we met. <clears throat> 48. And so two years later, I turned 50. When you're in your twenties, that's when you're like, I love you, but I don't know who I am yet. I got it. What if it's not, you get to a certain age, you're like, oh my God, this person is so cool. I've been with enough cool people and enough horrible people to know the cool people when I meet them. And you could just tell immediately that, that in in Meredith's words, she's an elevated person. She elevates things. What in my you, words? That that's your phrase. I, You're always right. Like I elevated. say I want to elevate. Elevate. I yeah. say to you, I want to elevate you and Alice to the next yes. level. Yes. Yeah, I do say that. So but, there's um, <laughs> that. You know, you you meet you you meet that person and you know it. Like oh god, yeah. She's but also amazing. getting married quickly. I definitely was like, I want to make sure he's ready. I want to make yeah. sure he had his grieving time. He and Alice went to therapy for a year. Alice was at this place called Our House, which deals with yeah. people who've lost a parent. They've gone through all this. Um, but also when you meet someone with a child, you have to be more serious about it than just dating a random person. Right. Like, I think I could have been like, I had to think of Patton more seriously because he had a child. And because of the situation, like, don't start dating this person if you're not like this child had a big loss and this child needs. So don't go messing with this. If this isn't like for yeah. real serious, don't mess with this situation. And um, and, you know, we also those three months of texting for two hours every night. It wasn't like every Friday we'd go on a date or Thursday, Friday and like talk for two hours over drinks and have to talk to the wait. I mean, this was like intensive get to know someone about every topic. And I feel like it was like three years of dating in, in, (laughs) in what that's a lot writing to someone and just being, Mm -hmm. so I felt like I'd already, and I also felt like this is serious. Like, are we going to joke around here and date or are you prepared for this to be your thing? Right. right. And so he, uh, and he went through it. He dealt with his grief, not that he still doesn't. And we talk about Michelle all the time. You know, a lot of people who marry somebody who's been widowed, widowered, widowed. I don't know. Widowed. Widowed. You're a widower. Um, I'm a widower, but I've been widowed. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Anyway. Um, the new wife sometimes has an adverse relationship, like a jealousy, like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm the second choice or um, or wow, she's so great. Or I don't you know, I, like a competition. Mm-hmm. And the way I looked at it, really, and I know people in my life who sort of have situations like that. And I. I was like, that's so sad to me. I was like. If I had passed it, and I thought about this too, Michelle has sisters and I was wondering how they would feel yeah. having a new wife. And I, my sister has little girls and I'm the aunt. And 
like such an ant, like they, they're not, not a, not a, like I visit you occasionally aunt. like a, I'll take care of you for the rest of your life. I'll be yeah. there. I'll do everything for you. Sister, go away for two weeks. I've got this. <laughs> um, and I thought if my sister passed away, like that relationship is so important. I could never let it go. And so I looked at her, Michelle's sisters, like me, like, Oh God, they, ha- you know, they need to be connected to Alice still. And I want to honor Michelle. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, it was like, I just knew the, the, the beyond us talking for three months and just linking every single way we could link Alice just immediately fell in love with Meredith. And I'm not saying that exaggerating. She came over for a play date. Al- Meredith brought fairy <laughs> houses. We built fairy houses. And yeah, the first time just, I met Alice, I just came over for a play date to just to be with her. Patton yeah, showed her the journey going, of Nick. Na- Patton showed her the movie, The Journey of Natty Gann. <laughs> and he and he's like, do you like that movie? And she's like, oh, my God, that's amazing. He's like, I actually know that girl. <laughs> and she yeah. loves kids. Do you want to do you want to meet her? And she was like, yeah. And so he's like, I could arrange a play date for you guys. And I came over and I brought fairy yeah. houses. And like, I'm Mary. I'm Mary Poppins anyway with all my she friends. Is. <laughs> yes. And I came over and we had the best play date. And and uh, and then I was like, this is so fun. And she's like, let's do this again. I was like, we could have a sleepover. And so I came the next time I saw her, we ignored Patton. It wasn't like yeah. we did not act like boyfriend, girlfriend. It was not none of that. And I slept in. I came over with stuff and a sleeping bag and um, I slept in her room. We had we talked all night long. Patton came in and he's like, you girls be quiet, <laughs> and, like treating us like we're little kids. And we I slept in her room and she and I had our own thing. And mm. and then. We spent some time together and then Patton was like, I I can see you really like Meredith and I know she really likes you. And then he's like, I really like her too. Would it be okay if, and she was like, yes, 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 yes. (laughs) Yeah. So. And by the way, I I remember I got some flack online about, oh, this is really quick. You know, again, it's the faceless anime avatar, you know, trolls. Um, But, and, but there are other widowers that I talked to and some of them were like, well, I got married three months after my wife passed away and everyone gave me crap about it. And I have a friend who got married 10 years after his wife passed away and his friends gave him crap about it. Cause like you waited too long. This is like, this is not, like, there's no way to, so just ignore it. It doesn't matter. There's always going to be somebody that will go, see, here's what I think. Well, you know what? You're not going through my grief and you're not uh, in my life. So I don't care. I like, I don't, and it wasn't also- even that I got angry or defensive. I'm like, I just, that's fine. Go be upset. I don't care. I think people don't understand that you can still hold your love for the person that you love. Like you love Michelle. You'll always love Michelle. It wasn't like she, you didn't get divorced. (laughs) You loved her. And, and, and you love me Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be a bad, it can be a collaborative thing. And I don't think people normally see it that way. I think this is, I don't know. I think this is a special situation. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason. Exactly. It's pretty amazing. It's I mean, you know, and again, I and not not to uh brag, but the the way that Alice lucked out, you know, having this crime fighter mom, but then this auntie mayor extraordinaire mom. It's it's just like just just the I don't know, the the abundance of blessings in her life have been I I will be forever grateful for. That's my niece oh. calling. <laughs> Sasha. Speaking I'm of Auntie Mary, I love you. Bye. <laughs> that's Aww. Auntie Mary. That's one of my babies that just yeah. called. She has I to call it. it. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, clearly you're a godsend. It's amazing. It's, you know, I feel clearly. But we feel, we do feel like Michelle picked it. At least I do. Yeah. Like, I feel like Michelle was like, who do I want? who do I need to raise my child? And like, I literally am Auntie Mayor extraordinaire. And she's like, that yeah. girl loves kids more than anyone I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> right. Her. Her. And then it's, it's like, her. who would Patton like? Like, she's got to have brown hair, blue eyes and big boobs. <laughs> that girl right there. And then she's like, oh, my God, it's the same person. And then she sort of just like. What we're it. saying is what we're saying is Michelle is a ghost pimp. <laughs> She, she, oh, she's gonna pimp. like this girl. Yeah, yeah, ghost pimp. Oh my god, that is hilarious. She's ghost yeah. pimp. I love ghost it. Pimp. But every now and then, you know, I'm like, thank you. And Alice is like, she's not God. And I'm like, well, she's not God. 
I'm just saying thank you. I'm grateful to her and the universe for what happened. And and then there are moments when I'm like, um, Alice. And then I'm like, oh, don't be too mean. She's going to get mad at me. <laughs> we are just on the outskirts of the eye rolls. She's 12. We're <laughs> just starting to see the beginnings of the teenager. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, but I, again, with base. with. Yeah, with 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 Meredith as the model for behavior and the and the and the design for living, basically, like it, she shows you how to live a cool life. That's what Alice gets to see every day. I think that's highly important. Especially, yeah. I mean, for any child, but especially a young woman, to see such um, mm-hmm. independent and uh, powerful, intelligent, uh, just all around badass women in their, in their life. It's a, <laughs> that's like you know you can't. <laughs> In a culture where you're not taught to always be that, that's that's that, that, that's priceless. So I yeah. think that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll do my job before I let you go and have <laughs> you tell me about your podcast. Oh, Mary, I forgot go. about that. That's oh, right. So I literally wasn't started, thinking about that. Our this whole is such life, a good conversation. We started texting each other. That's how we met. Mm-hmm. And um, and basically, it's much more. It's our mode of operation, basically. He's five feet away from me. I'm five. And and we text each other. And that's how we communicate. We He'll be in his mm-hmm. office. I'll be in my room. And I'm like, and we'll be like sending articles or sending something or just having conversations. And we never actually speak to each other. We just text all day long. And then at night, he'll get in bed. We'll go to sleep. So the podcast is sort of like a perfect opportunity. It's called, Did You Get My Text? Did You and, Get My Text? Yeah. And it's an opportunity for us to discuss all the things that we never talk about, but just text each other and never get a chance to actually sit down and have like a long conversation about it in depth. And what's also great is sometimes we text, we text each other the most mundane shit where you're looking at it going, this isn't a conversation. And we end up going down the weirdest rabbit side holes. alleys and rabbit holes about what should not be a topic of conversation. And we end up like, we'll send a picture, like a funny picture from the internet of like a cat and a motorcycle helmet. And that will lead to a discussion about God. It's just, I just <laughs> love that when that happens. I like it too. I think that's a good uh, trait of most couples when you, I love that. I know my wife and I just constant text thread that thing from the beginning of our relationship. That's never, I haven't, deleted. I still have the, I have not deleted it. I still have you it. You guys, we're like millennials. We're like, we're <laughs> really like texting and like, I'm not even going to talk to you. I just want to like text you. Yeah. I love it. I'm uh. excited. For the, the, did you get my sex as well? I hope. My se- <laughs> oh shit. Oh. That's a spinoff. Did you get did my you sex? Get- did you get my text after dark? Did you get my sex? Oh my god, baby, let's do that too. No, <laughs> good lord. Did you get my sex? Wow. Uh, I'll just tell one thing that I should not tell at all is that I took this picture of myself just lean back and buff and shirtless, and then I will put the uh an emoji of a bear on it because <laughs> and I send it to my wife because you know I call her a robot, she calls me bear, and then that'll be the oh. first thing usually when that's my usual sex to her. <laughs> it's a big cartoon bear head. Did she do and- a nude one with a little robot head? <laughs> oh yeah. I would love- that i don't think she's never put the robot head on it tell her to do like a new one like but a different robot every time like r2d2 uh you know like just different <laughs> do different classic robots but one time she sent me one when i was in a hotel room of her just like you know sexy backed and arched back in a, in a tub and then i mm-hmm. had a similar tub in my hotel room and so i just sent her one back of the same <laughs> <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that's amazing! It's a fun time. Yeah. Uh, so people should check out your podcast. Did you get my text? <laughs> Is when does it yeah. come out? It drops June fifteenth. Fifteenth, and okay. but right now you can hear previews on uh, Sirius Sirius Channel ninety four. Although by the time this episode drops, no, maybe our won't. thing will have already dropped. Okay, but yeah, yeah, uh, just and then, June fifteenth. <clears throat> June fifteenth. Perfect. Wait, yeah. What's your like time frame between you recording and releasing? Uh, this one will probably. I mean, it's up to you guys. I'll, if you want me to put it out on the same June fourteenth. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Is that a Monday? If that's a Monday, I could do that. Uh, I think it is. Is it the? It, oh my god! It is a Monday. Is Monday. We can do. Do that. you release yeah. yours every week on a on a Monday? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. I think we we're do doing Tuesdays. every week on a Tuesday. There you go. Tuesdays. Perfect. That's our thing. It's Tuesdays. Nice. <laughs> we can do that. We'll probably put yeah. it on the 14th for you. <laughs> uh, we'll 
push some people around. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my last question, same question, Pat, and you've answered it before, so you'll have to come up with something new. But Meredith, maybe oh, you can God. start. It's just yes. for a piece of advice, a little nugget of wisdom, a pearl, maybe passed down to you from your family, maybe something you learned just yesterday. I don't really care what it is, as long as it helps our getting better community to get better. Um, gosh, it's such an easy thing, but, you know, just be kind to everybody. Be curious about people. Listen to them. Uh, be a good person. I don't know. What's my piece of advice? Just be cool. <laughs> Love it. Honest. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase something I read in a Harlan Ellison short story, which basically is, and it, it, it relates to what we were talking about with about career and creativity, which is do not mistake 30 years of experience for one year of experience that you've repeated 30 times, like actually make sure that you've done your, like always experience new things. Mm. And you will learn to recognize a lot of people who, Yes, they'll go, I've had 30 years experience in this thing. It's like, no, you have a year in this and you just keep repeating that same year. Mm. And that's why you are where you are right now. Mm. I think that goes both. Great piece of advice. Um, I do have to go back because I think people love this part. And if I don't say it, people will get mad. Uh, goals. I do need maybe just give me some of your couple goals. If you want to give me individual oh. goals, that's great. But I've never <laughs> had a couple here. Do, do you have any goals as a couple that you're working on or or what can you tell me? My goal as a couple <laughs> is I, f I feel like you get married and everything's great. But then like every couple, I think, gets irritated with each other. And my goal is to be less irritated. <laughs> um, no, that's not a goal. Is it a goal? I don't know. What's a couple's goal, baby? My goal is to especially as a couple is as we get older, um, is to is to accept that yes sometimes being a couple means you're in this nice quiet not a rut but you're this nice quiet routine and, and you need that routine but then be conscious of it and then as a couple as a team go let's do something to shake that up for a little bit let's go travel somewhere we don't need to like sell our house and wander through europe let's just take two weeks but how to cool would that be the tanks it would <laughs> well it would be cool but then after a while you're like I miss just sitting doing my crossword puzzles. There was a reason I liked that house, you know, like, so find a balance just, but, but you know, to, to, I thought it'd be protect easier each other's to solitude. learn Italian than it is. It's not that easy. <laughs> um, you d defend each other's solitude, but then also inspire each other's adventurousness. Oh, baby. I love that. I love that. And I think yeah. we do that. I think we, we do. really do do that. We do we we do check ins where we're like, hey, let's try to now that the now that the ban seems to be lifted a little bit, we can travel. Let's plan a trip just you and me. Like do that, you know. One thing that I'm really this is going to sound so lame. I'm really looking forward to when I get home. I get home on June 12th, so again, this will probably already be out. But I just want to take Meredith out to dinner and a movie. I want to go have us get dinner and then go in a movie theater and watch a movie together and then afterwards talk about it and. Why did that like even if it's a bad movie and we can like discuss it yeah, either way, trash. I want that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just want to make sure there's like two seats on each side of us. Right. No, that's yeah. or, I'll just, or I'll just wear a friggin' mask in the theater. I don't care. But well, I think I just you have want to that. Then good. I'll do it. Yeah. No, that sounds nice. Thanks, I babe. You want to take me to dinner and a movie? Prices. Yes. Rent out, rent out the theater. Good prices still. <laughs> I rented yeah. out the whole theater for 220 bucks. What? So, what? Yeah. Oh, my God. I want to do that. Hey, wait a minute. Let's run into the theater and have a bunch of friends and watch a movie. 20 That'd people. Awesome. 20 people max. Rent out the whole theater. Mm -hmm. They. I don't know if they changed the prices yet, but the last time I checked, that's what we did for my son's birthday. We saw Mortal Kombat. Just the three of us, me, my son, and my oh, wife. Oh, wow. Full theater to ourselves. So we no masks, eating popcorn, having a good time. Wow. Okay, we're going to oh. do that. That's a great idea. Right. I love it. Thanks, Ron. You're welcome. And we can invite 18 friends. You really could friends. if you wanted to. And then it's like, you, you could make money if you charge them. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to 
invite 18 people. It's 50 bucks a ticket. <laughs> yeah, it's 50 bucks a head, but you get to be with your friends and that's really, that's what's worth it. Yeah. How much are, How much are you at the theater for? Don't worry about that. It's 50 bucks a head. It's and like it's a $2,000 $2, really rent of the theater. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, oh my God. The theater. I don't care where, if you throw was, in 50. It's yeah, fine. I don't care. Just throw in 50. I'll cover the rest. Yeah, we're, look, we're gonna we're gonna eat the balance in the theater, but what's important is being with friends. That's why that's why we're spending the money, okay? <laughs> total, 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 total hustlers. Oh my god! Like, I don't think they needed the money. They could yeah. it couldn't be a big money maker th- for them. I think Meredith and Pat grifted us on that one. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, thank you both for being here. I love you both, Pat. Ron, you know you're I love so you. Sweet. Oh, thank yeah. you, Pat. Thanks, you man. know what you meant for me my entire uh, career, and even before I met you, Meredith. I'm a new fan, but a, <laughs> a bit a big fan. Ooh, and- I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. Make people love me. <laughs> Fall in love. It's a new f- look. Look for a new person to be a fan of. Absolutely. Oh, nice. Well, thank you guys for coming. Thanks for having us. Thank Thank you you guys for listening. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out our last episode right over here. Bam! Or perhaps a video picked by our overlords at YouTube. Boop. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit it up. Hit it up. Press the button. Press it!